But now that we're recording, this spot is zero degrees, okay? And then you start at 30 degrees. So this represents a 30 degree angle. From this line up to here is a 45 degree angle. From this line to here is 60. There's your 90 degrees. Okay, so there's your degrees all the way around. 360 degrees is the same at zero. Okay, so this allows you to represent all those different degrees in one instead of a bunch of little mini triangles like this triangle here, which would be a 30, 60, 90 triangle, or this triangle, which would be a 45, 45, or this one, which is really the same as 30, 60, 90. So instead of having all these different triangles, they just put them together in a unit circle, and then you could see everything the same. Um, Okay, so degrees and radians. We've worked with degrees today. Radians are their counterpart in terms of pi. Pi is uh, the ratio that represents 3.14. All the way around the circumference around uh, an entire circle is 2 pi. So that's not written here. This just has 0. But 0 is the same as 2 pi, so you might want to write that down. You work with pi a lot in calculus. What are you doing pre-cal too? And then when I go fast, I say two pot, two pot, and it sounds like two pot. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a tribute to two pot, I guess. But that's how it is. Okay. So this is if you break that up, this is all the way from the start. Half a circle is one pi. That's why you have a pi sitting there. And then all the way over is two pi. And then you can break it up in the pieces. If from this point to this point is pi, halfway is pi over 2. And then half of that is pi over 4. Um, and then you can do other little things here, like break up from here all the way over into six pieces. One sixth. This is two sixths, which is one third. Three sixths is half. Four sixths, if you re reduce the fraction, four sixths, you get two thirds. Five sixths, here's six sixths. Seven sixths, eight sixths reduces to four thirds. Nine sixths reduces. Ten sixths is a reduction. Also, now I'm moving something else. Eleven sixths, twelve over six is two. So radians and degrees. Radians is the circle in terms of pi. Degrees are like what you're familiar with. Uh, so one thing you have to learn is how to go between radians and degrees. And so we'll talk about that. But the, right now I want to talk about these right here. These are your coordinates. It tells you the location of that dot. So this is called a unit circle because from the center to right there is a distance of one, one unit. So the x-coordinate is 1, because you are 1 unit over, but your y-coordinate is 0. You're right there on the x-axis. When I get to here, my x-distance is square root of 3 over 2. My y-distance is a half. So they're giving you the locations of these dots. That's just regular coordinate locations. But what you need to know is that the x-coordinate represents the cosine and the y coordinate represents the y, the sine. So that's how you use the unit circle to tell what the sine and cosine is. And then once you know the sine and cosine, you know all the other functions. So I can look in one spot. I don't need to draw a triangle. I don't need a calculator. I can look at any spot and tell what the tangent is or the secant is or the, or the cosecant. Because at any given spot on the graph, I know the sine and the cosine at that location. They're in alphabetical order. C comes before S. So cosine is the x-coordinate and sine is the y-coordinate. So one way you use this is for me to ask, for instance, what's the cosine at 60 degrees? Wait, you said sine? Cosine is first and then sine. Did I say it backwards than yeah. the way I wrote it? Yeah. Okay, sorry. They're in alphabetical order. C comes before S, so cosine comes half. before sine. So I'd be one half. Here's 60 degrees. So I go to that location. 
The cosine is your x coordinate. The sine is your y. I've asked for the cosine, so the answer is just one half. So I don't have to do op over hip. I don't have to draw different things. This allows me to have the information from all those triangles in one spot. Okay, so cosine of 60 is just one half. All right, so let's look at, let's say, the cosecant of 100. She had an appointment, and she arranged with me ahead of time why she was going to leave early. But you do not have an appointment? Well, don't pack up. Get some stuff out and do some work. Just sit there with your stuff. Thank you, Maya. It's true. Cosecant at 150 degrees. That's what I want now. Cosecant at 150 degrees. So you've got to remember to yourself, what's cosecant? So you know you're looking at, here's 150. So you know this is the spot you're looking at. And they gave you cosine and sine. Here's cosine. <laughs> That's on the recording. That's awesome. What is you being disrespectful. <laughs> So they gave you cosine and sine. You got to go back and figure out, okay, cosecant is a reciprocal of what? Reciprocal of sine. So if I know the sine, I just flip it upside down. Well, here's the sine. The sine is 1 half. So the reciprocal of that is 2 over 1, which is just 2. Cosecant at 150 is 2 because cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. How about tangent? Tangent at 330 degrees. That's what I want to see. Tangent at 330 degrees. This is why if the only thing you memorize is that tangent is op over hip, you're out of luck here. This is why in the beginning I gave you the definition of tangent in terms of sine and cosine because that's what you got to use here. So tangent is sine over the cosine. So you're going to put the sine number, which according to this graph is negative 1 half on top. The cosine at 330 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Good. So you get negative 1 over square root of 3. Those 2's cancel. And then you have to rationalize. So you get negative square root of 3 over 3. That's your tangent at 330 degrees. Okay, so you've got sine and cosine for every location. Sine and cosine for every location. You've got all your definitions for cotangent, tangent, secant, and all that. So you use those definitions. You put these numbers into the formulas. Simplify as necessary and then rationalize. So that's the advantage of the uni unit circle is one picture, and you can do tons of angles. With triangles, you have to have a different picture for every, every angle that you want to represent. Okay, so for homework, let's see what we got here. So 10 through, so here's what the rest of your worksheet. 10 through 13, you're just doing exactly what I just asked you to do, only this time you're using the radians. Uh, same thing for 14 and 15. Actually, the whole rest of it, you should be good to go. 18 and 19, they're giving you sine and cosine coordinates. And you find what they're asking for. What is today, Tuesday? Yeah, right? Okay. Make sure you go back through the rest of the worksheet. I would redo that whole worksheet. Um, when we come in here Thursday, you'll have a little open note quiz, because a lot of you need extra grades, over everything on this worksheet. So go back through that worksheet. We'll do a little quick quiz at the beginning, and then more fun. Do you want to do me a favor? I would love to do you a favor. What am I referring to?
For lunch. <laughs> what just happened to you? I was oh, for lunch. I love lunch. Yeah. So we're we just going to have one more test or just yeah. the final? No, one more test. Next Friday. Next Friday is the test and then the final. I mean, next uh, Thursday. Yeah. Okay. And then the final. Okay. Oh!